And that item is number 5C, informational presentation on the options or, or alternatives that the county may wish to consider in lieu of or in conjunction with the current integrated wildlife damage management program. Department of Agriculture is sponsoring uh, this agenda item. Ag Commissioner Morris, do you want to further introduce it, please? Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the board, Chuck Morris, Ag Commissioner from Mendocino County. Uh, the topic before you is a presentation of possible alternatives to the current integrated wildlife damage management Thank program you. the county utilizes through wildlife services. These alternatives will be provided uh, by Ms. Camilla Fox, the executive director of Project Coyote. This item comes to you today as a result of a lawsuit that was filed last year by Project Coyote and other organizations challenging the county's integrated wildlife damage management program. As part of the county settlement of that lawsuit, Project Coyote excuse me, is here today to present alternatives to that program. This is an informational presentation only and the board is not asked to take any action. That's my introduction. I'll pass it back to the board. Okay, thank you. Now we do have a presentation and whomever is going to be making that presentation, please come forward and introduce yourself. Good afternoon, supervisors. My name is Camilla Fox, um, and I want to thank you for that introduction, uh, Commissioner. I am the founder and executive director of Project Coyote, and as mentioned, I am here speaking to you on behalf of a number of national wildlife conservation organizations, specifically about predator management. And I will be focusing on um, a case study uh, from Marin County, um, and this is a model program that uh, we want to tell you a bit about to inform the process here. Um, so back in 1996, in Marin County and Sonoma and Mendocino, uh, Wildlife Services, USDA Wildlife Services, was proposing to test the poison compound 1080 in something called a livestock protection collar, which you can see up here. The poison uh, had been previously banned by the Nixon administration, brought back for use by um, the Reagan administration for use in this, um, this collar. And it's been quite controversial. It led to major controversy, particularly in Marin County. And it led to the formation of a small uh, coalition of organizations who banded together to essentially look for alternatives to poison. And it also led to a series of meetings with the uh, Marin County Board of Supervisors to discuss the concerns with the poison and also concerns in general with the killing of predators in Marin County. And what the coalition learned was not only was it poisons that were being used in Marin County, but also a variety of different uh, lethal techniques, including snares, uh, leg hole traps, and a variety of different shooting techniques. Now what we also learned in me meeting with the Marin County Board of Supervisors is that many of them were unaware that each year our county was funding this program, um, the USDA Wildlife Services Program, which essentially at taxpayer expense uh, kills uh, pro approximately three to four million animals each year. This does not include a variety of um, non-target animals that are also uh, killed and that is estimated to be about 50,000 non-target animals that are killed. And I share with you these statistics um, because some of you may be unaware of how many are actually, how many animals are killed deliberately in Mendocino County by Wildlife Services. Um, it was roughly about 459 animals in 2012, which included 25 bears, five mountain lions, 126 coyotes, and six bobcats. And um, so that you're aware too, since 1996, Wildlife Services has shot, poisoned, strangled by snare more than 27 million native animals in North America. This program has become incredibly controversial after a series in uh, Sacramento Bee. It's catapulted it to national stage. And a lot of groups are now challenging, which is the basis of the lawsuit here, whether or not this program meets environmental standards um, at a national level under the National Environmental Policy Act and under uh, at a local level under the California Environmental Quality Act. So I want to talk about what happened in Marin County. After that controversy in 1996 with the poison, uh, 
number of us met with our, our Marin County Board of Supervisors to express our concerns and to look at alternatives to the lethal program, to look at alternatives to poison, to look at some of the alternatives to the other practices which were very controversial, including a practice called denning, which is the killing of coyote and fox pups in their den, snaring, and other devices and methods that were deemed uh, indiscriminate. So from that series of meetings, um, the Marin County Board of Supervisors directed the Ag Department to convene a series of meetings between the ranching community and the conservation community. And what we essentially did um, with those groups is we identified common ground. That common ground included a recognition that native wild <coughs> animals are important to our ecosystem, that agriculture is also very important to Marin County. We also recognized that there were issues in concerns about wildlife services at the time. Um, and also we identified that perhaps there could be an alternative to the poisons and to the lethal approach that was being pursued at the time. Ultimately, our Marin County Board of Supervisors decided to end the contract with Wildlife Services. This was in 2000. And instead to use that money, that county portion, to to basically um, uh, in, in institute a non-lethal program. That is now called the Marin County Livestock and Wildlife Protection Program. It started as a five-year pilot project uh, to test and see how, it, um, how effective it was. It also was adopted as essentially an adaptive management approach, meaning that as new techniques were learned and discovered, those could be integrated into the program. So different techniques that are supported through this program include adoption of guard animals. This includes livestock guard dogs, llamas, better fencing, uh, night corrals, practices that have been shown to be very effective for both sheep and cattle ranching. Now how it works is essentially it took that county contribution that went to pay a federal trapper and it instead assists ranchers through a cost share program. And the ranchers who participate, we have almost 100% participation now with commercial sheep ranchers in Marin County. And essentially ranchers with greater than 200 head are eligible to submit a claim and receive up to $2,000 worth of uh, cost share contributions toward non-lethal methods. Now that contribution and that total amount has varied over the years depending upon the, uh, the county budget, but um, it has gone up to $2,000 to assist ranchers um, with 200 head or more. Those with 200 head or less are eligible for uh, reimbursements up to $500, and operations with fewer than 25 are not considered commercial and therefore not eligible to partake in the program. I uh, mentioned the different methods, and as mentioned too, it's an adaptive management program. So as new methods are discovered, new non-lethal techniques, they are integrated into the program. And a analysis was done, uh, analysis between the Wildlife Services Program and this Marin County Livestock and Wildlife Protection Program, looking at essentially five years of data between the program. Um, each program. And what was found is that, um, as I mentioned, there's nearly 100% uh, participation from commercial ranchers, sheep ranchers in Marin County now. Um, there is a uh, majority of ranchers who express preference for this non-lethal program over the USDA Wildlife Services program. And there has been a substantial loss in, or reduction in livestock losses, which you'll hear more about from um, our Ag Commissioner, Stacy Carlson. Also, a, a tremendous increase in the use of non-lethal methods, and in particular in Marin, that um, our livestock guard animals, including the llamas and the guard dogs, and also improved fencing. Um, and then finally, uh, there have been fewer species of wildlife that have been killed. So um, better that this actually come from our county ag than from my voice, but this is a quote from Stacy Carlson, who is our county ag commissioner. He says that, Losses fell from 5 to 2.2 percent, while program costs fell by over $50,000. For the first couple of years, we couldn't tell if the loss reductions were a trend or a blip. Now we can say there's a definite pattern, and the livestock losses have decreased significantly. 
And this is a quote from Anita Sauber, who was um, the former uh, on-the-ground person who actually implemented the program with the ranchers. She says, I know the program has made a difference for the sheep producers out there. In addition to the cost sharing, they are also being recognized in a way that they weren't before. And that's a big part of this program, is actually having people who are on the ground talking to the ranchers, talking to them about what methods work, what aspects of the program could be improved, and then doing workshops and um, other methods for assisting them. This past year, uh, the Marin County Department of Ag held a workshop um, with a focus on livestock guard dogs, and they brought an expert um, who deals with Anatolian shepherds. And what was really interesting about that program was that new guard dogs are being integrated into the program, for example, Anatolian shepherds that have been found to be very um, beneficial for protecting uh, poultry, among other livestock. So this is an excerpt um, from a film that we're actually working on uh, featuring this program, um, and hopefully this will work. Assistance with them. All out war on coyotes. And all it's succeeded in doing is making more coyotes. Lethal control is largely ineffective. In most cases, it, it'll make the problem worse. Can anyone hear this? And we kill hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them in horrible ways. Many of these animals are killed with indiscriminate lethal methods, including aerial gunning, snares, poisons. Well, I don't see any use in killing all the animals. I mean, they all need to be here for, for one reason or another. By eliminating, you know, the alpha male or female, you could actually upset. I'm going to see if I can just start this from the beginning here since we couldn't hear. How can, can people hear in the back? Okay. At the apple cart, so to speak. And... and thousand native carnivores that are killed in the U.S. by USDA Wildlife Services, about 70 to 80,000 are coyotes. We have an all-out war on coyotes in this country, and so far all it's succeeded in doing is making more coyotes. Lethal control is largely ineffective. And in most cases, it, it'll make the problem worse. And we kill hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them in horrible ways. Many of these animals are killed with indiscriminate lethal methods, including aerial gunning, snares, poisons. Well, I don't see any use in killing all the animals. I mean, they all need to be here for, for one reason or another. By eliminating, you know, the alpha male or female, you could actually upset the apple cart, so to speak, and, and create more coyotes being produced. If you were to remove all the predators, not only would the environment suffer, but you would throw the ecology completely out of balance. You can never do just one thing. That's one of the first laws of ecology. So anywhere from killing a few to killing many just opens up Pandora's box. They have so many tools and so many ways to compensate for that uh, lethal control. So in 1996, we learned that uh, this federal agency was going to be using a poison called Compound 1080. None of us knew what it was. None of us knew about the agency that was going to be using this. Well, the Marin County Livestock and Wildlife Protection Program uh, kicked off with the controversy around using 1080 uh, collars for uh, predator control. In addition to compound 1080, wildlife services use another deadly poison called sodium cyanide. My dad used the cyanide devices here and whatever animal tugged on them basically was killed. My experience was that you either got a, a young coyote that probably wasn't the problem or, or you got an innocent bystander, so to speak, a fox or something like that. Millions of innocent animals that are actually helping our ranching and helping our land are being killed indiscriminately. 
So when we learned about this poison and the agency behind it, we then learned that this agency had been functioning in Marin County for decades at taxpayer expense. And they were already killing bobcats, badgers, mountain lions, foxes, particularly at the behest of ranchers. Animal groups interested in protecting wildlife came forward and asked that we try non-lethal approaches. And this includes livestock guard dogs, llamas, better fencing. Here was assistance to help them mitigate livestock losses and to obtain, you know, methods that they had never previously employed before. You know, part of my job as a farmer is to figure out how to coexist with the wildlife. And I really don't like shooting and trapping and killing various animals that I think we ought to share, um, share the road. I believe today we have uh, 40 guard dogs out on 20 plus ranches. And we have, I think, 35 llamas. Livestock losses from predation has markedly declined. When USDA Wildlife Services was in the county, the total program cost was around $80,000. Since they have left, the program costs have declined down to around $20,000. The Marin County Livestock and Wildlife Protection Program is just becoming a national model for how to do it right. It's a great reduction in depredations. It's become cost effective, and ranchers and farmers have been really much more involved with the natural functioning ecosystem. And the more they learn, the more they can improve um, those kinds of non-lethal control practices. If you want to keep an ecosystem healthy, you've got to have the whole carnivore complex. You've got to have predators and their prey. If, if there were more counties that adopted this and actually implemented it on a serious level like we did here in Marin, they would find that they could be successful as well. We need wild animals. We need all kinds of wild animals and the more different kinds of wild animals we have the better. You know, when, when the coyotes are singing outside, I always, you know, turn off the stereo when we hear them. We turn off the stereo and open the windows and say, listen, listen, do you hear them? And it's a sense of wildness around you. There is an intrinsic value to that. One of the things I often get is a question about um, llamas and how they work. Um, so we actually have a great little clip here from the BBC uh, showing a llama in action with, um, with coyotes. And as mentioned, this is one of the tools that is increasing in use in Marin. And there are several studies, peer-reviewed studies, that show um, how incredibly effective they can be, particularly for sheep ranchers. So is there any way to manage coyotes? Some people, like sheep farmer Maggie Julson, believe they found a natural technique. The old-fashioned way of controlling coyotes is with a gun. But I believe a lot of ranchers and stewards of the land are, are changing at this point. And they're doing it by putting guard animals such as burros or donkeys, dogs and llamas in their flocks. All the different guard animals do different things. The, the burrows, the male burrow has a tendency to uh, chase away the coyotes. The female burrow pretty much stays within the herd. And then my llama, the, the llamas just don't like dog-like animals. An unguarded flock of sheep is defenseless. But aggressive guard animals can protect it. The coyote is harassed until it is confused and eventually looks elsewhere for a more predictable meal. With all of them up here, I feel fairly safe. And I, to, for me, it's the most logical thing to do is to have the guard animals. It's much more efficient than uh, government trapping or anything because they're always here. And they do what they do naturally. <coughs> so I want to introduce, I'm going to end with a quote um, from Stacy Carlson, but I also want to introduce Kelly Hendricks, who you saw in our um, film clip there. She is a cattle rancher from Petaluma, 
and she is our predator friendly ranching coordinator for project coyote she's um, done an amazing job working with ranchers um, talking about non-lethal techniques and really why why it matters to have predators on our landscape what benefits they provide to us um, in helping keep rodents in con in check and and other valuable um, invaluable uh, attributes that predators provide. So I'll end with this quote from Stacy. He says, this innovative model sets a precedent for meeting a wider compass of community needs and values where both agriculture and protection of wildlife are deemed important by the community. The success of our county model has set the trend for the rest of the nation. And I want to put out there to Mendocino, as we've done recently with Sonoma, um, if we can help in any way move you towards a similar kind of program, we're not saying that this exact program is something that you should duplicate as is. It might not be um, doable here to do it exactly like, but it provides a template, it provides a model, it, it, it also describes a, a process um, of, of governance where you involve a lot of different stakeholders at the table to be able to find common ground. I think that's very much possible here. We offer our services in any way. I know our colleagues too with the other groups involved. Um, so truly we would love to work with you and I put that out to the Ag Commissioner as well that any way that we can work with you towards that. So I'm going to introduce Kelly. Hi, as Camilla said, my name is Kelly Hendricks, and I'm the Predator Friendly Ranching Coordinator for Project Coyote. And um, my husband and I um, live and work on the Barcia Ranch in Petaluma, where he's run the cow calf operation for over 20 years. And um, as the Predator Friendly Ranching Coordinator for Project Coyote, I um, talk with ranchers in the community that and um, help them implement, you know, new and non new and innovative uh, products that we found and like this, the fox light, and um, Camille and I have had meetings with the uh, Sonoma County Ag Department and also the Marin Ag Department where we've also shown them these products. And um, this one is, um, was invented by a, a sheep rancher in Australia who um, uh, was going out and checking his sheep at night and you know they were getting killed by foxes and um, when he took the flashlight out there he realized after a while that the you know just the action of the flashlight sent you know kept the predators away so he invented this and it's um, called the fox light and um, it works by it's on a dust till dawn sensor so at night if you put it in the middle of a field it's got very strong LED lights that have a random action so it emulates somebody walking through a field with a flashlight. So if you hang it in the middle of a field, um, it, it's, the lights are really strong. It'll go like a half a mile. And it um, repels the predators. So um, we did some testing with this uh, through Marin and Sonoma County. And because it's been used in Africa to keep lions away from livestock. It's been used um, in Nepal against the snow leopards. Um, Elephants has been used for a lot of things. So, and also they're using it. Montana Fish and Game Department tested some, and they just ordered 20 more yesterday. Oregon's using them. Um, I think Idaho and Wyoming are the two states in the Rocky Mountains that have not yet used them, but everybody else is starting to use them and test them. And they've been working great there on wolves and. Um, we used them, we tested them during the lambing season this last year on um, so several ranches in Marin, Sonoma County, and uh, all the ranchers ended up purchasing them. Every, every one we had out in the field was purchased by the ranchers. Um, nobody had a known deprivation while they were up. Some of the ranchers have a lot of sheep, so they're like, you know, we could have lost one, we don't know, but they were all happy with them and all purchased them. And in fact, um, on one ranch, I'd heard that the woman had a mountain lion deprivation that took some goats, and I thought, oh, crap, that's not good. And I went out and talked to her, and it turns out it was um, one of the neighbors had had it happen. She had the fox light and had no problems. So it's, there's no silver bullet when it comes to um, livestock protection. You know, the, no, no one single thing is going to work for everybody. But, um, and technology's changing, and we have new things coming up like this, but um, if you keep an open mind and work with different products like this, you can, um, and the Livestock Guardian animals and 
other techniques like this, night corrals, things like that, you can be really successful protecting your livestock without the use of, um, of uh, lethal controls. So um, I also last year we did, as part of Project Coyote, we did workshops for non-lethal tools and live, you know, we had a livestock guardian dog trainer there and um, so ranchers came, we had a lot of ranchers come to that and we're going to be doing another one in this next sp uh, spring with um, the Marin Ag Department's going to co-sponsor it. So I encourage Mendocino if, if for ranchers in the area to come out and um, participate in the workshop and uh, we hope we can work together and, get, and implement some of these non-lethal tools. So thank you. mention one last thing there is um, Kelly mentioned we will be having this workshop uh, in Petaluma um, regarding non-lethal predator management techniques we are co-sponsoring that with Marin County Department of Ag and I will be offering to Commissioner Morse that we would love to have any ranchers from here come and join and learn about these new techniques so and perhaps at some point we can do one up in Mendocino as well so thank you for the opportunity today Thank you, and is that the end of your presentation? That is the end of my presentation, okay. yes, so, yep. Thank you, thank I would you. like to, um, I, there may be questions, so don't sit okay. down yet. I'm happy but to I, answer any questions. I would like to note that we have been um, given materials, and um, I don't know if we have extra for anyone to look at what you've given us. Uh, Supervisor McCowan has a question. Well, actually, I just wanted to note that the uh, Hopland Research and Extension Center will be testing the Fox Light in 2016, according to information uh, submitted to us. And if you really want to uh, optimize your attendance at a workshop, I would suggest perhaps work with the Ag Commissioner and the Hopland Research and Extension Center uh, and host a Mendocino County presentation. We'd be happy to do that and welcome the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're now going to go to public comment. Um, there will be no action taken on this item today other than receiving the presentation. So I wanted you all to know ahead of time. Um, our first public commenter is Mr. Robert Kiefer. Please come forward. And he'll be followed by Chris Schooley. Thank you. I'm Robert uh, Kiefer. I'm the superintendent at the uh, UC Hopland Research and Extension Center. And so I've given you some material I'm just going to read. It's, it's basically a statement, gives you kind of a, a background history of what has taken place at the research center over the decades. And um, yeah, so I'll just read it. The uni if I can see. The University of California Hoplin Research and Extension Center was purchased as a working sheep ranch from Roy L. Pratt in 1951. At the time of the search for such property, the Range Land Utilization Committee within the UC College of Agriculture stated, very little work has been done on range management problems, the answers to which are essential to determine how a range must, a range must be handled in order that it may be maintained in a productive and improved condition. These latter types of investigations must be carried on under fully controlled conditions and for a long period of time. It is for these studies in particular that a range experiment station is required and henceforth came the purchase and establishment of the UC Hopland Field Station now known as the UC Hopland Research and Extension Center. And please be aware we only have three minutes. Okay. The, the Rangeland Utilization Committee went on to further state, while the production of feed for livestock has been and often is regarded as the primary purpose of these range areas, they have other uses and values which must be considered production, such as production of game and other wildlife recreation and watersheds. These multiple uses, uses pose problems that have received but little attention on, on, on which very inadequate information is available. 
Since that early time of the center's inception, UC and non-UC scientists from many disciplines have worked together to solve California's rangeland problems. Well over 1,400 publications have been identified as resulting from work directly associated with the center's existence. Over the last 64 years, the UC <clears throat> HRAC has made significant contributions in developing and refining knowledge in the fields of domesticated livestock management and production, rangeland agronomy, <coughs> uh, wildlife biology and management, watershed management, grassland ecology, and human health related vector borne diseases. When the university first purchased 4,600 acres of property and working sheep ranch from Mr. Pratt, the ranch <coughs> ran around 1,100 head of sheep. In the first three decades of UC ownership, the sheep flock size increased to approximately 2,000 head of sheep under the management of the UC, but those numbers have diminished over the last three decades. HREC currently runs approximately 500 head of sheep, not counting the current lamb crop, lower numbers due to economics and reduced need for research animals. During this time frame, over 60 authors, researchers, present <coughs> presenters have conducted field research, written peer-reviewed <coughs> publications, or presented topics to public audiences. The related, <coughs> all related to the arena of predators in general. <coughs> Specific uh, field research has included such topics as predator behavior, predator management, predator control, both lethal and non-lethal, and predator population modeling in addition to assessments of the social, political, eth ethical, and economic issues of the animal damage control. So I'm going, I'm not going to read the whole thing, I'm going to kind of summarize it up a little bit. Essentially, uh, essentially the University of California Hopland Research and Extension Center is there to, uh, to conduct uh, unbiased, peer-reviewed um, field research and much has been done in, in the arena of predator uh, predator management, predator, predator biology, that sort of thing, and we are open to, uh, to those opportunities. Um, we have uh, a current project proposal underway looking at the, uh, the fox flight, um, and that's, uh, that's planned for year 2016. Um, so since I'm almost out of time, how much time do I have? You're out. <laughs> no. Yeah, so That's I'll wrap it up. That's what the red light's have, telling you. <laughs> yeah, you have the information here. So thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Next speaker, Chris Schooley, and he'll be followed by Richard Henwood. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Schooley. I'm the acting park manager at Lake Mendocino uh, for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. I just wanted to uh, talk about the integrated wildlife damage management program that, uh, that the county uses. Uh, first off, I'd like to say that um, we don't use it at all for uh, anything in the presentation uh, for you know coyote or any of those target species, but I'd like to offer an alternative viewpoint where um, we uh, use that service at the lake. Um, as federal uh, federal land management agency, we're tasked with um, you know camping and recreation and all sorts of activities, including wildlife management on the east side of the lake. We have our wildlife management area. Um, for as long as I've been there, uh, we've had issues with feral pigs, um, and one of the you know problems that we've had is we go to the state, we get a permit to do depredation work out there. And, and we're charged with, with, with doing our own trapping, but then we're not chartered to um, carry any sort of firearms. We are not game officers. We are you know, resource protection, regulatory officers. We don't carry firearms. Um, and then we have to go and find you know, a way to, to uh, take care of these animals. Um, there's been you know, clear public safety issues out there, in, um, and we've had some, you know, a lot of resource damage in the campground in the wildlife area. Um, so the uh, program that went through the county, we are actually able to, you know, at a minimum of, of uh, cost of the ta additional cost of the taxpayers, pay the county a fee to have the trapper come out and do that, um, and it's it, it's incredibly effective to, uh, you know, get get these animals out of the, the that area. Um, we have a lot of you know, hiking trails, biking trails, equestrian trails that go through there. We have had I've had direct reports of the public 
who come into contact with the with the feral pigs we've had out there. So, you know, we don't have a real easy way of of doing trapping out there because of our charter, um, and that you know we're not game officers, and we do. We, we can allow you, you know, the, the trapper through the county to come out and do that. And it's a great handshake between, the, you know, the, the, the federal government and, and the county government out at Lake Mendocino. So it's just, uh, you know, I'm not here to say, you know, for you to decide one way or the other, um, but just to offer some facts about, you know, how we use that program out there at, at the lake. It's, it's extra extraordinarily effective um, at, at abating the problem and, you know, addressing a public safety issue as well as the resource damage that is done out at the lake so it's a very effective program thank you mr henwood please come forward state your name know you have three minutes and he will be followed by doris duncan my name is richard henwood i'm a rancher and grape grower in hoplin <clears throat> uh, i'm in support of the uh, wildlife management management program <clears throat> um, during the uh, year of uh, winter of 2013-2014 uh, <clears throat> I, I lost about five calves to, to uh, coyotes and I observed the uh, coyotes eating my calves on a hillside <clears throat> and this was over a period of a couple of weeks I, I then uh, contracted with uh, wildlife services <clears throat> to try, try to uh, solve that problem we eliminated about eight coyotes and uh, since then, I've not had a problem at all. The coyotes not only <clears throat> um, killed livestock, they've actually threatened my workers in the, in the vineyards. They're, they're, they've challenged them, um, which is a very scary, scary thing for them. Um, I've, uh, I've personally observed coyotes attacking a, a cow that just dropped uh, twin calves and um, drag, dragged one of them off. Um, Portions of my property are fenced. They have very tight uh, deer fencing, which <clears throat> goes down to just a few inches uh, high at, uh, at the bottom. So, so it should eliminate coyotes. Coyotes dig right underneath it. Um, uh, they come through wherever the uh, uh, creek, creeks are running. <clears throat> so fencing has not been an option for me. It just doesn't work. <clears throat> Um, the other the other problems I've had <clears throat> with coyotes is they chew up my drip lines in my vineyards <clears throat> and some years it's not too bad some years they chew up a lot and then it requires <clears throat> my employees to go out there cut the drip lines back out <clears throat> and, and replace them all so I've had good luck with the uh, wildlife management program and I'd hope that you would continue it thank you thank you Doris Duncan be followed by Ann Reniker Hello, I'm Doris Duncan, Executive Director for the nonprofit Sonoma County Wildlife Rescue. I started working there as a volunteer about 18 years ago. So um, we're also licensed by the Department of Fish and Wildlife um, and by the Department of U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services and by USDA. Um, I handle a lot of the rescue calls that are a little more challenging and complicated, such as animals that are um, caught in leg hole traps and caught in snares and strangled. Um, I've been on the rescue scene at least 45 to 60 times where I've taken animals out of these traps and brought them back to our hospital where they were so maimed and suffered for so long that we could do nothing but euthanize them. And it's just, um, in my opinion, and a very horrific approach to handling the management of wildlife because there are not very many places where wildlife have to go. And um, I usually feel very upset and hopeless when I'm trying to rescue some of these animals and I bring them back to the wildlife hospital where our young college students and interns and volunteers are all working very hard and have dedicated their lives to helping animals. And um, because of this frustration, we started a program called a wildlife exclusion service where we go into people's homes and businesses. We're like CSI investigators and we figure out how animals are getting in and we use natural and um, humane methods for keeping them out. We also just started um, a predator prevention and education barnyard. It's on a piece of our property that's owned by the County of Sonoma where we have two acres that we've turned into an education barnyard. So we have um, 
many, many effective wildlife friendly techniques that work to keep predators out, to keep um, um, your chickens and goats and other small farm animals protected from coyotes and things like that. We found that it works and um, we're having a very hard time um, working with the wildlife services people who don't always understand that there are other techniques. We want to educate people more about the techniques that do work. The guardian dogs, I've seen it to be very effective and the proper fencing to use. And um, we have this open to the public. We're going to be the first in the United States to have a program like this where people can come from anywhere and see how these techniques work. And I hope that we can consider these more humane efforts to protect our livestock. And I really appreciate you listening. Thank you. Thank you. Ann Reniker and Ann will be followed by Rebecca Woodcuff. My name is Ann Reniker. I moved to the forest and I have really enjoyed having uh, flocks of quail and uh, herds of uh, deer and some uh, wild turkeys and of course we also have skunks and I've seen foxes and other animals but I didn't move into the woods to kill the wildlife. I, uh, I observe them and I, uh, I don't think it's good to feed them but I, I, I let them be and they're, they haven't bothered me and uh, when I had chickens I had, had a good good fencing for them and also a dog who uh, helped c keep the well that you know the predators animals away and in uh, I've read about uh, places where uh, like in Idaho where they don't uh, use the predator management they do uh, they kill all the predators basically um, it's not a good thing because there are only like three wolves left out there in the one wildlife park in Idaho and all of a sudden the deer and the uh, elk and everything are stripping the forest bare and uh, you can't really take one thing out of the web of life and expect that it's not going to have an impact on the whole ecosystem and so I, I like uh, this presentation was good about management con uh, methods that are non-lethal and that uh, will help. I, I think the gentleman from Hopland that has sheep that are, are, are cows that are getting killed could try the uh, guard dog method. And so I approve the, of the uh, stopping the, the wildlife killing by the wildlife service people. Thank you. Thank you. Rebecca Woodcuff. She'll be followed by Leslie Grevier. Rebecca Woodruff. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I'm a rancher from Sonoma County. I have sheep, chickens, and I do predator friendly ranching. And I just wanted to let people know that that works. I've been on this ranch for eight years. I use llamas and dogs and I have never lost a single animal, with the exception of a chicken to a, an eagle. Mm. I just want to let people know that you can use these animals. They are absolutely efficient. I wish that I could have recorded what a llama sounds like when it identifies a predator. This llama was rather calm compared to mine. They can scream a, a scream that you can hear for a mile. And it alerts everyone. It alerts me. It alerts the neighbors. My neighbor has cattle on his ranch right next to us. We all hear those llamas. So they're actually working for the land, the land next door. Because a llama can see for miles. So chickens, same thing. I'm right along a creek. The creek that borders our property is a super freeway for animals in Bennett Valley. We have coyotes, foxes, raccoons, you name it. A few years back, we had mountain lions. And what I was doing, I really had to put my money where my mouth was. So I ended up going out, building an uh, electrified fence. Well, I had the fence, and I electrified it. It was a night corral that they're speaking of, but I used it all day. I drove my RV out there, because I didn't know about the fox light. <laughs> and I was there all night, turning on and off, turning the lights on and off. Those mountain lions went right past my property. 
They killed two deer in the creek. And I'm saying, I didn't kill that animal. It's part of the ecosystem. I'm glad it's there. I see coyotes. I've had them in my yard, and I've seen the llamas chase them. So this works, and I, I hope that the rancher that was here, try it. Bring those animals in. You don't want poison bombs. These cyanide bombs you saw those pictures of, they're so horrible. These leg traps. I actually am very emotional about it. I've seen it. Please stop this. There are other ways. Thank you. Leslie Grevier. Hi, and good evening. I guess that's most appropriate. My name is Leslie Grevier. I um, am born and raised here in Mendocino County. Um, first off, I'd like to thank you all for hearing all the great things that need to be changed in Mendocino County regarding the earth and um, the county in itself. Um, there's a lot of stuff that has happened that you all have an opportunity to change. So um, moving forward, um, I want to thank you for being so patient today and listening to all of that. Um, I, I grew up here, um, in, born and raised in Laytonville, and over my lifetime saw many wild animals. Um, one in particular that I think about is the porcupine. And when I think about the porcupine, it saddens me because the logging industry, when they realized what, the, what was happening to some of the timbers, um, took war on the porcupine. My 29-year-old son, who's also grown up here in Mendocino County, has never seen a porcupine. So I want to ask this board to be aware of that. Let's not make the same mistakes. Um, moving forward with the uh, um, wildlife agency, and I want to call it the unacceptable killing agency that we in Mendocino County are um, and have been partnered with is extremely criminal to me because of a few things. There's no accountability. Um, the county was throwing money in. Fish and game were throwing money in. They've changed their name because they want to be more aware and more on top of the wildlife, which is great. But we need everybody to be on top of that. Gentleman spoke about um, uh, animals tearing up his grape lines and having to replace them. How about putting a water trough out there? So they aren't after those grape, those those drip lines. I mean, there's common sense that goes along with all of this. Um, approximately five years ago, the, our current um, wildlife trapper um, shot and killed my brother's dog 100 <coughs> yards from his kitchen with my sister-in-law and her daughter standing in their yard. This dog was five feet over the count, uh, property line, was shot and killed. My brother threatened to kick the gut dude's butt, ended up in court over the whole thing. It was swept under the carpet. That person is still in his position today. Lots of pets get killed. And quite frankly, it's been 11 and a half years for myself personally that I have looked for ways to change this, and you folks have that opportunity right now. And I'm, that's why I'm here um, a little unorganized because I had kind of stepped away from it for a few years thinking that there was no common sense in anything that we were doing. And I really want to thank you guys for um, bringing this to light, making the choices you've made, and I look forward to uh, the new things that we're going to do and learn and to move forward and, and protect this beautiful, beautiful county that we have. Thank you. Dorothea Dorman, and she'll be followed by Beth Suela. I want to commend the people uh, speaking for non-lethal, non-harmful ways of controlling the predators who attack their animals. Uh, but I want to bring up the effects of continued drought, which is from what I know of what the climate scientists are speaking of, is not going to go away. This is a permanent worldwide drought that we are facing. Uh, and it's going to have... Uh, a, a, a very large effect on 
how many cr uh, close cropping non-native animals our ecosystem can uh, sustainably produce. Uh, that's sheep, cattle in particular. And historically, uh, bringing in non-native animals has been a disaster to native grasslands. We now have primarily uh, uh, non-native annual grasses, which are very susceptible to burning, as opposed to the original grasses that were bunch grasses that are much more fire resistant. And that's because of the massive numbers of domestic livestock animals that have been uh, brought in and uh, cultivated here. Uh, and so I just, I think we're going to have to change our figures as to what is sustainable, what we can do, and uh, think more of uh, protecting, preserving, and restoring uh, native species, uh, woodlands, grasslands, so that our, 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 our migratory birds are in serious trouble from habitat destruction. Uh, and the same with our butterflies and all kinds of, of wild creatures are in trouble. So I think we really need to rethink our handling of, uh, of our native ecosystems. Thank you. Thank you. Bersuela will be followed by Jim McCutcheon. Hi, I'm Beth Suela, and I'm the high school agriculture teacher at Anderson Valley High School. I've been there 26 years. We have a seven acre school farm. We have landscape areas, garden areas, plus we have livestock, sheep, goats, chickens, rabbits, and students. A couple years ago, we had sheep out in the pasture. In the morning, I went out to check on the livestock, and I'm counting lambs and there's a lamb missing. It's pretty early in the morning, pretty quiet. Um, where's the lamb? I walk around the pasture. Our pastures are about one acre space. I walk around that pasture. I can't find the lamb. I'm thinking, okay, who stole the lamb? Where, how, is there a hole in the fence? Five foot non-climb, <clears throat> excuse me, five foot non-climb fence around the pasture. I'm like, okay, so I go up to the office and say, hey, we're missing a lamb. I'm gonna go back out there. It was a little bit lighter. I found the lamb next to the fence. It had a huge bite mark on it. And I'm like, all right, now what? So I ended up calling the um, wildlife services. Wildlife services came out, looked at the lamb, said, yes, that looks like it was a mountain lion bite. Searched around the fence found where the, the mountain lion had climbed up over where the bracing was, could see um, hairs and things like that where the lion had tried to get to the lamb. You know, a lamb can be replaced, but if I'm out there and I have a student out there in the morning feeding livestock or in the evening feeding their livestock, um, their parents aren't gonna think they're so replaceable. And uh, so he trapped the lion and did away with it. I really would like to have no predators on the farm, but I know that that's not possible because we live in the country and we live right next to a creek and I see fox and traces of fox on our school farm all the time. But dealing with students, dealing with myself on the school farm, can't have mountain lions on the school farm, can't have them on our campus. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Jim McCutcheon, and Jim will be followed by Albert Prather. My name is Jim McCutcheon. I have a small ranch south of here. I've uh, been in the sheep business and cattle business for several years now, since 1966. I um, don't have the problem I did have before because I have guard dogs now, but they still have problems. Uh, not at night, on the bedding grounds, the dogs keep them, the coyotes away. Uh, it's in the mornings after they go out to feed, 
They scatter out. The dogs can't watch them all. So they don't stay together. I need go herding dogs along with guard dogs, apparently. <laughs> but uh, and I've had, uh, I still have ki kills. I have to call uh, the wildlife services if I can't stop the predation myself. And uh, they always have very good luck with them. They stop the problem. I uh, try to keep the fences pretty well up, which I, uh, if I find a dig in, I chop it or put a snare. And I don't like to use snares because you gotta keep chucking them every day, which takes a lot of time. Uh, and then the pigs go into the fences and raise them up. And uh, as far as the, uh, I, li I like all kinds of li uh, wildlife, but uh, the uh, coyotes, if they stay back on their own country, fine. But if they get into my f sheep fences, into the sheep, I got to do something about them. <coughs> and there's no, as far as I'm concerned, there's no predator for the coyote. They're just going to keep multiplying and multiplying, and it would cause more problems in the urban areas. So I, uh, I believe that we need this predator program, and I support it wholeheartedly. Thank you. Thank you. Albert, please come forward, and after Albert will be John Harper. I'm Albert Prather. I've been in the sheep business since 1952. And if it wasn't for this program, we wouldn't be in the business. I don't know if we're going to stay much longer or not, but the coyotes are terrible. They're smarter every year. They kill more stuff every year. I got guard dogs, good fences, working it all the time. I work every day at it. You can't stop this stuff. We can't lose our tools. Thank you, Albert. John Harper, and John will be for, uh, followed by Dorothy Kong. Hello, my name is John Harper. I'm the University of California Livestock and Natural Resources Advisor for Mendocino and Lake Counties. I've been in this position since about 1991. <clears throat> I conduct applied research and provide science-based education to the range livestock owners and managers and to the general public here in Mendocino and Lake Counties. My degrees are in animal science and agricultural economics from UC Davis and my uh, range management from the University of Arizona. I've prepared two papers for the board and the public and I can share them with you after I finish the three minute warning here. Um, I've also placed those two papers at the back uh, for the public. Um, one recounts the historical impact of Mendocino County livestock predation by wildlife and the other summarizes the results of a very current rancher survey on non-lethal control methods used by Mendocino County ranchers, what species of wildlife damage they deal with, and when or if they would use lethal control to protect their livestock. Um, back in that, er, the er, historical part of the paper, uh, the 1990s, the coyotes, mountain lions, and bears were the primary predators. The historical paper reminds us that ranchers must control predation from a financial and an animal welfare standpoint. Without the USDA Wildlife Services trappers, ranchers would have to control predation on their own. Historically, they are not as well trained as the federal trappers, and there's greater potential for taking of non-targeted wildlife or domestic pets with the methods they might use. The recent, recent rancher survey paper shows that Wildlife Service's technical advice on non-lethal methods is being used by Mendocino ranchers as their first defense. It also shows that they only use lethal methods when these non-lethal methods fail to prevent the killing of their stock. The primary predators today remain the same, coyotes, mountain lions, and bears. I understand the emotional concern that both ranchers and the general public have regarding wildlife and predation. I do urge the board and to the public to recognize that wildlife services is the better choice 
for selective removal of predators that began killing defenseless domestic livestock, that ranchers do use non-lethal methods first and only use methods for maintaining their animals' welfare. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Dorothy, please come forward, and Dorothy will be followed by Robert Tim. My name is Dorothy Kong. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, Board, and Chuck for uh, inviting me here today, and the audience. Um, well, I retired a number of years ago and came back home. I was born and raised over in Elk. We have a ranch up on the ridge. And my mother was losing sheep right and left to mountain lions and coyotes. And it was just pathetic. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many mountain lions that we had to call the trapper on and coyotes. At any rate, a few years ago, well, I mean, you know, I moved home. My mother died, and I took over the place. And what I tried to do was to start uh, focusing on non-lethal methods uh, please, of killing. Please, uh, well, please I, direct your I comment. I know, I hate to talk to the backs. Oh, I know. <laughs> but and, am I loud enough? Yes. OK. Anyway, focus on non-lethal methods. So the first thing that I did, when my mother had what she called a bone yard, which is a huge old redwood stump, and she would take all the dead carcasses and throw them in there, which was a haven for the predators to come and nibble. And so I got rid of that. Uh, and after I got a tractor that had a scoop on it, we dig holes and bury the carcasses. I don't have a large number of sheep like Sam Prather has or some of the other ranchers, so you know that's probably not feasible for them. But for me, it works. The secondly, I got a guard, uh, guard dog. I had two guard dogs. Unfortunately, I lost them both recently because they got cancer and they died. From the time I got the first guard dog until he died at the age of 10, we lost two sheep to mountain lions during that period of time and one sheep to coyote. Now, that's a 10-year period. and. Uh, after the dogs died within a period of two months, I lost two sheep to uh, mountain lions because we've got puppies, but we have to train them. So we work on that. Uh, we also bring the sheep in every night into a, a safe enclosure. There's pretty high fences. There are no climb fences with barbed <coughs> wire on top, but coyote or uh, mountain lions can still get over them. And so that's what happened with the, with the two sheep. Uh, the guard dogs are just wonderful. I can't talk enough about how good they've been. We also walk around the periphery or go on ATVs and check for scat and all this kind of stuff. We do the best that we can to minimize the predators getting our sheep. But there comes a time on occasion, like in that period of 10 years, we had fencing. We did for like four or five different things to non-lethal methods, but we had to call wildlife control. And my three minutes are up. Yes. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Robert Tim, followed by Jay Gray. Good afternoon, Robert Tim, Extension Wildlife Specialist Emeritus uh, with the University of California. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. As director of the Hopland Research and Extension Center from 1987 until last year, that's about 27 years, uh, my staff and I have continually had to deal with maintaining a healthy sheep flock, including uh, trying to reduce or prevent predation. We know that coyotes are really highly uh, variable in their behavior and hugely adaptable. I really do admire them as a species and respect them for their perseverance in the face of decades of control efforts and their intelligence. And I often tell students, somewhat tongue-in-cheek, that there's only one rule about coyotes. That is, that there aren't any rules about coyotes. <laughs> Highly variable. Um, it does seem, though, with some degree of caution, that we can make some generalizations at work. And let me attempt that. We know that some coyotes will exploit livestock or other domestic animals when they have the chance to use them as a food resource. 
And it appears to me that once a coyote starts to kill domestic animals, the reversing that behavior is extremely difficult, if not impossible in most cases. So this leads me then to the conclusion that to completely prevent predation, uh, coyotes do need to be either denied access to sheep or livestock or other domestic prey, or coyote numbers need to be substantially reduced, both of which are really impractical uh, or cost prohibitive in most places in Mendocino County. There is, in my personal opinion, a need to employ lethal control for individual coyotes or in other individual predators from populations at some times and places in order to reduce predation to a tolerable level. My colleagues and I investigated during the 1990s with an IPM grant a potential model strategy for conducting coyote predation at Hopland. And over a three year period we used both livestock protection collars that Ms. Fox mentioned earlier and guard llamas with our sheep flocks at Hopland to reduce, reduce predation by selectively removing only those coyotes that attacked coyotes, which would die when they bit an, a lamb that was wearing an LP collar and ingested the toxicant. Other lethal control strategies, such as traps or shooting, were largely suspended during the period of the study for three years. We found that the LP collar reduced lamb losses, even though only a few coyotes were removed in comparison to previous practices. And the, uh, the lamb losses were the lowest we had had in two decades at the center. Um, while the success of guard llama use was very inconsistent and we could not reach any conclusions about their effectiveness. Unfortunately, during the third year of the study of successful passage of Proposition 4, which banned traps in California, also immediately banned the use of the active ingredient in the LP collar, leaving us with uh, essentially no tools for the remainder of the 1998-99 uh, lambing season. And as a result of that, lamb losses during that winter and spring reached or exceeded the high levels we, highest levels we'd ever seen at Hopland, which were in the range of 18 to 22 percent of our total lamb crop. Um, during my tenure at Hopland, I found that the wildlife services personnel who assisted our center were really knowledgeable, efficient, and highly competent, and we really um, um, had a good working relationship. In conclusion, I'd like to suggest that the issue of whether wildlife services program continues in our county hinges on several questions such as these. Is there value in utilizing rangelands of Mendocino County for grazing livestock, sheep, goats, cattle for the production of food and fiber? Do we as a society believe that domestic animals, including livestock, as well as hobby animals and pets, uh, which as domesticated species have little natural uh, defense against predators, do, do they deserve our protection? Um, when non-lethal strategies of preventing predation on livestock or other damage are impractical or not fully effective or in cases of public health and safety, is there a value in having trained professionals assist us and assist ranchers and landowners? And do we as citizens of the county place different values on the life of a calf, a lamb, a ewe, a nanny, a kid, a, co a coyote, a mountain lion, a bear, or a golden eagle? Or expressed in different words, does the life of an individual predator outweigh the life of multiple lambs? We need to These are not up. easy questions nor easy decisions, particularly when it's difficult to weigh our human emotions together with scientific information, which is less readily available and less known by the public. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tim. Jay Gray, followed by Steve Letson. Madam Chairman and board members, thank you for having me today. I can't talk that fast and I don't have much to say except I've been a sheep rancher all my life. I'm third generation uh, rancher here in, uh, over in Fort Bragg. We've always had mountain lion, coyote, bear, you know, things like that. Uh, in our sheep, we've always had trappers to turn to. They're not the bad people that it's being made out today. They have very different techniques than they use today than they have in the past. We've learned how to um, amend the, the animals' rights because, you know, we live with them as far as, you know, the bear and the coyote and the mountain lion. We're, we're ranchers and mountain people so we don't dislike them if they leave us alone we leave them alone but to um, go out for instance um, I have my sheep in a barn 
there's just a very small space in top of that barn between the wall uh, and the and the ceiling, and a mountain lion came through that area and jumped down and brought a 50 pound lamb and just took him right back up through that hole and gone. So what do you do when you have when you're up against that kind of a critter? You know, you really have to call a professional. And that's who I call. And I'm thank you very much for thank your you, time. Uh, Steve Litson and Stephanie Larson, you're next up. Well, good afternoon. I'm Steve Ledson. I've been farming uh, growing grapes and running cattle for over 40 years in uh, Mendocino and Sonoma counties. And I think the biggest issue I see is that um, we have a huge increase of predators over the last four or five years. Two years ago out on our Fish Rock Road Ranch, uh, on the Capucci Ranch, we had a bear come in there and eat uh, about two and a half acres of grapes and be, not just wipe out the grapes, which is thousands of dollars of money, but they knocked over a bunch of the vines that were planted back in the late 1800s by Antonio Capucci, and you can't replace that. And over on our Bald Hills Ranch, uh, just out of Boonville there, Two years ago, we had a bear come into our shed and rip the door off the shed, rip, take all the uh, all of our uh, aqua shade and stuff out of there, all the tools, break things up in the place. Uh, a few months after that, it was snowing one night, and um, I get up in the morning, the bear had walked right across my deck, right by my door where my daughter sleeps, right out through the yard. Then last year, we had a big bear got into our, our pinot vineyard and uh, wiped out probably five tons of grapes, broke a bunch of vines up, ripped the fence down. We, um, we got a permit, removed the bear. A week later, two more bears were in the vineyard, did a whole bunch more damage, ripping out the irrigation lines, tearing the vines out. And over the years, like see, like last year, we lost probably close to 12 deer from mountain lions. You can actually see where they've attacked them, drug them down the hill, drug them across the road. So we have a real, Un, unbalance of our all all the animals so these mountain lions and bears and coyotes are eating up not just our own cattle and wiping out our vineyards eating by irrigation lines but they're also wiping out the deer there's an imbalance so we need to keep the program that you have in place and keep working it so we can keep the balance going thank you so much for your time thank you Stephanie Larson and Stephanie will be followed by Devin Jones. Good evening, uh, Board of Supervisors of Mendocino County. I'm Dr. Stephanie Larson. I'm with the UC Cooperative Extension. I'm the County Director for Sonoma County, and I am also the Livestock and Range Management Farm Advisor for Sonoma and Marin Counties. I've been in this position over 30 years and have conducted a variety of research looking at different tools to manage predation losses, in particularly in sheep. I will also be the one conducting the research at the Hopland Research and Experiment Station on the uh, Fox Lights, looking at all the different non-lethal tools that are implemented currently at the Hopland Research Center. But I came to you today to talk about the Marin County Non-Lethal Predator Program, because I was involved in the inception of it. During the first year, the Marin County Agriculture Commissioner staff, Anita Sauber and I, educated sheep ranchers about the program and then enrolled them. During the first year, Anita and I verified predation losses for the indemnification program. Each rancher was paid for non-lethal practices and losses due to predation. After two years, the indemnification program was changed to only pay for 5% of the losses, as the number of losses increased beyond the program's ability to pay. So what that shows you is that, yes, it did start at $80,000, and that money was used to pay for losses that were incurred due to predation. But after two years, there wasn't enough money to pay that, and the program was cut, and the following year, after the inception, so three years into it, the indemnification program was removed because there just wasn't enough money. So it has dropped to $20,000. In 2006, five years after the program's implementation, I assessed the uh, Marin County Non-Lethal Program and I submitted those findings to a paper to the 2006 Vertebrate Press Conference. And I found that the number of sheep producers had decreased, 
in Marin County as they'd gone out of business due to predation losses and those that remained in business reduced their sheep numbers and converted to cattle production. However, the number of estimated coyotes killed increased by over 100%. I do also have an Ag Commissioner Stacy Carlson's quote that said, privatizing predator control could increase the use of lethal devices which could result in the discriminate taking of non-targeted animals or the likelihood that unskilled citizens would resort to the home remedies that could adversely affect the animals, environment, and non-targeted species. Camilla has said that um, this is a model program that has successfully addressed and embraced ethical concerns as well as differing values expressed by both animal protection and ranching communities. However, this opinion is not necessarily shared throughout the livestock production community either in Marin County or elsewhere in California. Even Commissioner Carlson has stated it may be difficult to transfer this program to other areas based on geographic and demographic differences. The Marin County Lethal Program eliminated wildlife specialists that pre previously managed predation, although it did not reduce the number of coyotes killed. Coyotes are indiscriminately killed has grown due to the lack of the wildlife specialists managing the program. And due to this lack of oversight, there's no way of knowing how many co coyotes have been or will be killed. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Larson. Devin Jones, be followed by Robert Leminski. Hmm? Lashinsky. Lashinsky. Thank you. Good evening. Devin Jones, Mendocino County Farm Bureau. Um, so first of all, I'm not going to say me too, but I do agree with a lot of the comments that have been brought to you specifically by the farmers and ranchers that were here today. Um, one aspect of the Wildlife Services Program that hasn't been brought forward is um, the public health perspective of this. I mean, honestly, I think I probably get more calls from the general public um, at my office than I do from farmers and ranchers regarding how do I deal with a raccoon in my um, attic? How do I deal with a skunk under my porch? Those types of calls. So obviously I typically refer them to the Ag Commissioner's Office and to the Wildlife Services Program. Um, simply because you can't get pest control uh, to that degree for larger varmint type species um, just by looking in the phone book. So I just want to remind you guys that that's a big portion of the calls that the Wildlife Services deals with in Mendocino County. Um, public health, and we have diseases that are transmittable to humans that are tracked uh, by the wildlife services programs if they come upon a uh, suspect animal such as rabies, raccoon roundworm, and leptospirosis. All of these are transmittable to humans. Um, so again, want to mention that component. Uh, technical assistance is a non-lethal pra uh, practice that is implemented by the Wildlife Services staff. Um, and basically, they provide recommendations to assist ranchers and rural property owners with wildlife interaction. Um, the skunk calls, you know, how do I keep bears from approaching my orchards or those types of things. Actually, last year they provided close to 700 technical assistance recommendations um, between the Wildlife Services Program and the Department of Fish and Wildlife. Um, so for property damage specifically, a lot of the times you're not going to get um, a permit to go take an animal by lethal methodology. So if I'm trying to keep them out of my apple orchard or my vineyard, if I can't document a public safety component, there's not necessarily going to be that um, permitted ability to use the wildlife, um, or excuse me, the fish and game methodologies. So um, there is a lot of technical assistance that goes on. And finally, I would like to say that you know the Marin model of using non-lethal uh, methodologies, um, and like you've seen today, there are quite a few of those that are implemented in our county, but it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Um, most of the pictures you guys saw today were very open, sorts of grassland. That's not necessarily the situations we see in Mendocino County. Our topography is very different. Um, we have a lot of different species that we're dealing with here, including bear and mountain lion that weren't really highlighted in, in the presentation today. So coyotes are only one of the many species that we deal with um, here in Mendocino County that are specific. and. Um, I'd be pretty concerned if I was sending out the common citizen trying to deal with a bear issue. It requires training and special equipment and those types of things. Um, exclusionary fencing, you know, if you've got a 10,000 acre ranch, even if you got the funds and wherewithal to maintain that on a regular basis, you're going to see um, species getting through. It's just going to be the natural case. Um, hogs, especially in Mendocino County, are a concern. We've been working with the Regional Water Board <laughs> a lot, talking about some of these concerns for water quality types of issues. Um, I don't know, if, I'm sure you're all familiar with it, especially in the fall, you'll see acres of just plowed ground. Um, so these are all some things I just want you to consider in, in terms of supporting the program. Thank, Thank you. you. Robert Leshinsky, I hope I said it right. <laughs> Followed by Scott Ireland, I think. Madam Chair, uh, board members, 
Uh, my name is Robert Lashinsky, and uh, I'm a rancher, Mendocino County. Uh, I wanted to come and uh, give my support to Wildlife Services to show my support. Um, they've been a great source for us. Um, there's many other ranches that are, are like mine in Mendocino County, so you know they maybe aren't here today, but um, but are similar. So we have uh, primarily a cow calf operation up near Covlo. It's uh, 16,000 acres. Um, so some of the fencing and, and guard dogs just isn't able to work for us. Um, we have 400 mother cows, which are dropping calves right now. So they're on that open range land um, because that's where the feed is for them right now, um, actually calving right now. Um, we also cut and bale a ton to a ton and a half of hay and pigs can be a nuisance for us uh, in, in that part of the operation. But primarily it's bear, coyotes, pigs, and lions. The pigs we take care of by exclusion fencing. You know, we probably have two or 3,000 acres of valley ground that we can exclude the pigs from. But for the coyotes and the rangeland, there's just no way we could do it. Um, Yeah, and then as far as the fencing, um, I checked with the, you know, some of the guys on the ranch, and we have in excess of 50 miles of fencing for boundary fence and cross fences. So, you know, it just would be cost prohibitive to be able to go and, and replace or modify all that fence. So, I'm here in support of the uh, wildlife services. Thank you. Thank you, Scott Ireland, followed by Jonathan Spitz. I've uh, lived on or near ranches or farmland for the last 25 years of my life, and uh, I've, I've seen the efforts trying to reduce predator populations as basically being a failure. You just can't do it. You have to outsmart the animals and live with some kind of losses in some way or another. Um, I live in a neighborhood where there is a, a, a wildlife services agent and I've seen some of the cruelty um, of some of the trapping methods that go on with this program. Um, it's also very ineffective. You're not going to get rid of coyotes by continually killing them. They're going to keep breeding as their gestation rates actually increase as they're wiped out, or you think you're wiping them out. Um, I think what we also need to remember is, as dwellers in rural areas, we are in the territory of these animals in this wildlife um, Wildlife management, in my opinion, is one of the larger oxymorons of our time. Um, we basically need to realize that we need to find a way to integrate with wildlife rather than try to dominate it and wipe it out. And I think this program that um, Marin County has adopted is, is really slam dunk effective. Um, it's less costly. I think you should really take a serious look at adopting something similar to it in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Jonathan? Um, be followed by Kim Davis. It's pretty tall. Uh, my name is John Spitz. I've lived in Mendocino County uh, in Laytonville for over 30 years. Um, I uh, most of the discussion has been about ranchers and and this uh, program for protecting uh, ranches and and livestock. And I think um, you know if if the program is in, 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 uh, is used as you know described. Uh, it could actually help them, uh, you know, in, in non-lethal methods. So, um, and you know, when you when you live in the, the you know, you, we're moving into their land and where they live in their homes, and uh, so you know, you can't expect that uh, you're not going to have some losses. I think it's very unreasonable to expect that you're not going to have any losses. So, you know, when I hear these stories about I lost a lamb or a cow, you know, that that's not a, a reason for for killing off all this wildlife. Now. Um, my problem uh, has been not, I don't have a ranch and I live in a more residential area. And um, I used to have a lot of bears that lived in my area. And it was just, you know, one of the things I love living in Mendocino County so much is, is the wildlife. And the bears are just so amazing. They're just such amazing animals. You know, you, you see a, a giant 500 pound animal and it, it's just awesome, you know? And so I've never had any problem with them. Uh, on my land. They never touched a thing, they'd never done any damage. Uh, but a lot of my neighbors, you know, they, they moved from the suburbs or somewhere and they, they just set up this these little, I don't know, ranchettes I guess you might call them. And they've got all their stuff everywhere 
And of course the bears are going to come and they do a lot of damage. And so they called wildlife control, they came and they killed all the bears. There's no bears where I live now. I tell you, it's, it's an unbelievable tragedy to me. It really hurts me. And um, so, you know, I just, uh, there's, there's better ways to do this. We know there are. I know it would have to be adapted to our county. We're different than Marin, but it can be done. And we have to try. Uh, we can't just go killing all these animals and uh, come moving into their homes and killing them. And so uh, i just like to say that wild lives matter, and I want you to take it seriously. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Kim Davis, followed by Kate Marianne Child. Hi. I'm a resident of Mendocino County, and I live in the rural countryside with many acres, and I'm surrounded by thousands of acres of open range. And I choose to live where I do, and I have the understanding and knowledge to make educated decisions. And what I want to say is these individuals, groups, lawyers that continue to move north in our state and every county, finding a homeowner representative to back their agenda, um, I, that's what they're doing. And our, our county is different than Marin County. It's very different than the southern counties. We have situations where I live with bears and lions and they're destructive to me, my home, and um, neighbors. I believe that one of the reasons we're here today in spending our time and energy here is because we're not just being presented with a creative idea, but we're being forced with their agendas and they're being backed by enormous funds. I believe that our underlining agenda is based solely on emotions with few and very exaggerated um, information. I've seen these same faces over and over in Sacramento. Um, I attend several meetings in Sacramento. They have the same agenda and, um, and I've also heard other studies and um, scientists and documents, documentation presented with different outcomes than I've read and I've seen what they've presented. I believe that it's unfounded to bring a lawsuit in order to push a personal and emotional idea. I think that let us individuals and our individual counties choose our course of action and not be forced by a lawsuit um, based on emotional viewpoints. And I urge you to listen to what I, I'm saying and to listen to these ranchers and these property owners, what they have said. Don't let these groups pressure you or distract you with um, consuming studies, which I've seen them do. That will only wear you down. And. Um, I oppose this lawsuit, and I do support the wildlife management program. Thank you. Thank you. Kate, and Kate will be followed by Jeff Pierce. I want to start out saying that I have great sympathy for the economic losses and the heartache suffered by ranchers who lose their animals to predators. Um, but I do want to say that uh, those of us who oppose wildlife services are not doing so on purely emotional grounds. Uh, most of the problem predators are coyotes and that's the species that I'm going to address. Um, mountain lions and bears require different methods than coyotes and I'm not educated on those. And I don't care about how pigs are killed. They, I mean, I don't mind having pigs be killed. They're an invasive species, and they're wreaking havoc on our ecosystem. I also want to say that I eat meat, and I appreciate the products of our ranchers, but I agree with what other speakers have said, that uh, the wild animals were here first, and we can't help but experience losses of our domesticated, domestic animals. I have a chapter on coyotes in my book, Secrets of the Oak Woodlands, so I learned something about them. Coyotes are a keystone predator who keep local ecosystems healthy by controlling populations of rodents 
and other small plant-eating mammals, and they also even eat insects, too. A lot of their diet is insects and berries. They're not mainly uh, predators of large animals. They have managed to expand their range in North America to an enormous degree after year, hundreds, a hundred years of extermination campaigns waged against them. And most scientists and even ranchers have come to agree, or many ranchers, maybe not most, I don't know, have, but have, have come to agree that both mass and selective killings of coyotes only make the problems for ranchers and farmers worse. So here's how it works. Uh, a coyote family consists of um, an alpha male and an alpha female and, and four to six pups during the summer and miscellaneous adults uh, from previous litters. When a member of a coyote family is killed, and those are usually beta coyotes or yearlings or pups, the size of a pack drops for up to a year. And that re results in an increase in available prey for pack members. So al the alpha male then often mates with other f another female besides uh, the alpha female. And sometimes an outsider comes in and mates with a pack, fem a pack female as well. So th now there are multiple females giving birth. Is my time up already? It is. Oh, no. Um, OK, so I just want to end by saying, uh, reiterating what Camilla's presentation said, which is that the more you kill coyotes, the more coyotes you have. They breed more. So the more you utilize wildlife services to kill coyotes, the more you're going to need wildlife services, and the more it's going to cost. Uh, Madam Chair, <clears throat> we do want to hear from everyone, but uh, it's been a very long day for us, and so I really encourage people to stick to the three-minute limit. We do have a 5.30 rule that any supervisor could invoke at any time after 5.30, and the meeting ends right there. So please. Please go forward. Thank you, Madam Chair and the board. I'm, I'm Jeff Pierce. I am an attorney uh, with the Animal Legal Defense Fund, one of the groups from uh, Point South. Um, but I would like to speak in my capacity as a resident of Northern California, not as a, an animal attorney. I live on unincorporated land outside of Sebastopol. I live on a goat farm, and that farm maintains a, a guard llama. Uh, I'm also an avid cyclist in Northern California. I've done a lot of biking here, primarily in southern Mendocino County, Ukiah, Boonville, Point Arena, um, throughout Mendocino. And I, I would agree with the former speaker that Mendocino is a, a different place than Marin County. Uh, and I, I would agree in the sense that Mendocino is a more wild place than Marin County. Uh, I don't know that it's um, a purely emotional statement to say that human beings desire to have a meaningful interaction with the wild. Uh, I think that that would be, uh, in addition to an emotional statement, uh, an, instinct, an instinctive statement, a moral statement, a philosophical statement, uh, and, to, and to risk too great a word, an ontological statement, a statement about uh, who we are at the, at the level of our being. Wildlife services, as you know, is housed within the Department of Agriculture which tells you that their expertise is agriculture. Their expertise is not wildlife. It is a rogue agency that the Fish and Wildlife Service, the US Fish and Wildlife Service, didn't even know about for a good many years. So we had in the federal government one agency tasked with conserving keystone predators. We had another agency tasked with destroying keystone predators, which is a colossal waste of money, far worse than what we know is robbing Peter to, to pay Paul. Uh, I would encourage you to look very closely at the data, the data that shows that non-lethal methods are not only more effective but less expensive. Uh, so purely from a pragmatic standpoint, putting aside uh, all the other claims that I made about uh, our desire to interact meaningfully with wildlife, as a, a purely practical 
uh, policy matter cost-benefit analysis, uh, I would urge you to think very closely about whether you want to renew your contract with Wildlife Services. Um, and uh, I can tell you uh, in closing that uh, as a member of the cycling community, people come from all over the country to enjoy the, the roads here in Northern California, and they come in part because Mendocino is a wild place. It would be a less wild place if you continued to eliminate your wildlife. Thank you. Uh, Larry Meyer, followed by Larry Tunzi. Madam Chair, board members, um, Larry Myard, here to show my support for the uh, Wildlife Services Organization. Um, our family moved into Mendocino County in 1925, got into the sheep business in the early 50s, got out of the sheep business in the mid 70s thanks to the coyotes. Uh, we ran at, I think, our peak about 2,300 ewes. Um, 1080 was banned in 68, uh, I believe, by Congress. Um, the first coyote showed up in 72 on our ranch, ever, and out of the sheep business by the mid-70s. They're very effective killers. Our train, unfortunately, cannot be fenced. It's straight up and down. Um, anyway, but so I'm throwing my support behind them. I also have gotten into the cattle business because we're out of the sheep business. Um, I've had mountain lion predation on, on calves five calves in eight years that I can prove because you have to find them to understand that it was a mountain lion that killed them. Um, and I have been given help where, where needed. Um, I'd like to have somebody tell me that National Geographic was wrong and the coyotes came from Central America and, and they were not native to the United States. So here we are talking about a non-native species according to National Geographic. I don't know if they're accurate all the time. So um, I'm watching my biggest concern regarding the ranch, our ranch now is the deer population. The native deer population has been decimated since we took the sheep off the ranch. And now they are living, they are the number one treat, the favorite. Uh, fawns are a specialty. The fawns are dropping quite rapidly right now. And we've had four deer does killed, two of them while they're um, giving birth, um, right in our main compound, surrounded by the houses. That's where the deer have come for safety because we are providing them safety by trying to keep the coyotes in control. So our native deer species is taking it really badly due to, I believe, a non-native predator. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Larry Tunzi, followed by Jessica Bloom. Thank you. I'm Larry Tunzi, a rancher in Compshi, and you know we use uh, llamas. Been using llamas for years. We have excellent fencing, but even then, that still doesn't work all the time. You get a, what I call a rogue coyote or a mountain lion. Uh, coyotes tend to dig under a fence, and they'll get in. They'll kill three or four lambs in a night, um, and then lions will will jump a six foot fence. So that's really hard to try to maintain fencing perfect all the time. We do the best we can, but it's still. You get an animal once in a while that's just, what else are you going to do if they're going to continually kill? Um, so, uh, you know, I, I want to uh, reiterate the fact of, of rabid animals and some of the other problems that are uh, in the county. And I don't think many of us want a homeowner running around with a shotgun in the, in the city limits trying to deal with a rabid animal or something like that. We need professional people to do the right job and be selective about it. So I, I, I want to go on record supporting the program. Thank you, Larry. Jessica Bloom. Followed by Ron Stark. Hi, uh, good evening, commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity, uh, and thank you for keeping an open mind in this process. My name is Jessica Bloom. I am a staff attorney for the Animal Legal Defense Fund, like my colleague Jeff Pierce. We are one of the plaintiffs in the lawsuit that uh, was filed against you and that you've recently settled in order to comply with the California Environmental Quality Act. Um, I just wanted to make sure that uh, you understood that we really appreciate your 
um, willingness to take a look at this issue for compliance with that those environmental parameters and and recognize that this isn't going to be the only opportunity for you to receive public comment or input from the community and from people who support both sides of this issue and we ask that you really evaluate vigorously um, the non-lethal predator control alternatives uh, in conjunction with the possibility for lethal predator control when that would be necessary in, in extreme circumstances for its its impact on the ecosystems that that you're seeing um, and not just for um, its impact on on livestock or or, or predation of, of what amounts to, to private property of, of certain individuals at great expense to the general taxpayers of Mendocino County and elsewhere um, science will tell us exactly what to do in this situation and, and and so that's all we're asking you to do is to look at the science and evaluate it with an open mind um, and, and I know that's going to be a difficult political decision for you um, I can tell <laughs> by the the number of comments that you're receiving today and so I just wanted to to make those overtures uh, at this time thank you thank you Ron Stark be followed by Rick and Rick I can't read your last name <laughs> Hi, I'm Ron Stark. I have a uh, sheep ranch in Covalo, and I have a friend who has a sheep ranch in Covalo also. Um, I'm in support of alternative methods for control. I use night penning to protect, protect my sheep. My friend uses guardian animals, uh, guardian dogs for her uh, flock. But this is uh, just a part of the issue. I have uh, a huge pig problem. I mean, my, my hay fields are being ripped pieces by feral pigs. So I've, I'm using wildlife services to trap these pigs, get rid of them. Um, there's, there's hundreds of pigs all over Covalo right now. Uh, I spent thousands in fencing for, to protect my sheep, and the bears are tearing the fencing apart. They come in in the fall when the, when the acorns are there and they just go right through the fencing between the barbed wire and the field fencing below. They just part it and push the fencing down and go through. I've never ever seen so many uh, bears in my life. Now I'm not really doing anything about the bears um, as the, we're not trapping them, but we are trapping the pigs. And um, when the pigs get into the fields and root, it looks like a bomb went off. And um, so uh, I'm in support of wildlife services, and I think the county uh, needs to take a common sense approach to this whole thing, which I would see as um, encouraging guardian animals to protect, but also realizing that it's not just predators. It's the pigs are a, a huge growing problem, and wildlife services deals with the pigs. So. It's a complex issues, and then there's, as people have said before, there are times when um, the guardian animals don't work, um, where coyotes will sometimes lure guardian animals away from a flock, while two other coyotes will go and, and nail a couple of the of the lambs. So it's it's complex, and I think you have to deal with the situation uh, on a per case basis, and not have a carte blanche uh, zero kill policy. Thank you. Thank you. Rick, and followed by Paul Truett. Uh, good evening, and the name is Rick Bullock. I'm sorry, I probably didn't use my reading glasses. Uh, and thank you for indulging all of us and staying over late. Uh, and we appreciate the fact that you're giving both sides of the issue the opportunity to, uh, to be heard. Uh, I think ultimately your body needs to rule in what's best for the community, uh, regardless of where either side is on this issue. Um, I do support wildlife services, as you've heard many times. They are experts, number one. Number two, uh, you heard a, a number of times they try to search out non-lethal uh, methods if they can. And third, they are requested. It's not like they're just driving around looking to do something. They're, they're requested to do the work that they do. Um, myself and Camilla are involved in some Sacramento opportunities on predator management. Uh, the, the Fish and Game Commission has tasked the Department of Wildlife to develop, an a, develop a predator plan. And so she and I are part of that plan. But that body, the Fish and Game Commission, has made it clear that they do not intend to impact the abilities of ranchers and farmers to deal with predation issues. And they've made that very clear. And um, I think that's something that you all need to hear, that that's going on in Sacramento. And there's going to be a pred predator management plan over the next coming years. Um, 
And as one of the ranchers, the older rancher noted, I think the most important thing, if folks want to use a non-lethal method, fine. Or if they want to use wildlife services, I think both should be in the toolbox, as he noted. Thank you for your time, and thanks again for staying over later. Thank you. How wagonette? He left. Well, left the building. come on up, Paul. I didn't see him, but I wasn't sure. I'm almost gone. It's 6:30. Uh, thanks for having us again up here. Um, I am in complete support of wildlife services. I think one of the most important aspects of wildlife services, which is really uh, useful to uh, to rural people as well as urban people, is their technical assistance. I've uh, had many calls um, as I'm the commissioner for fish and game in the third district, and I get numerous calls on skunks, raccoons. And a lot of that stuff that normal, you know, normal people don't. I mean, rural people are able to handle that, but um, a lot of folks just don't have the wherewithal and the understanding in order to deal with a lot of the technical things that go on with, even with mountain lions. A few weeks ago, we had uh, uh, Ian Cheney who was driving up his driveway in Fort Bragg and and uh, witnessed a mountain lion crouched 10 yards from his daughter. So if Ian hadn't been in there a few minutes later, it's 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 probably possible that the lion would have attacked his daughter and this is in a rural area so uh, gary johnson was called and they brought some dogs out they didn't catch the lion we tried for two days and that's just kind of the way it is they're smart you know the cats and the so i think we need to use a balanced approach to this problem i, I think as rick said i i think it's great if somebody wants to use guard dogs if it works for them um that's that's a real plus you know um but there are those times and and many of those that arise where technical assistance from professionals is very valuable just the education on you know keeping your trash in and a lot of things that the trappers they 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 give an enormous amount of information for the homeowners that people just don't don't think about so i really support this program i think it's uh, it's vital um, i think that there is a big coyote problem uh, we just finished a study in uh, in the Mendocino National Forest, where the uh, it was uh, 69 out of 100 fawns are uh, eaten by and predated on by black bears, and it's due to the uh, overcapacity and the in the large density. So, am I, am I off? You are. Okay. Well, thank <laughs> you very thank much you. for listening to us today. I appreciate that. Thank you, um, Peter Bradford. Thank you, Peter Bradford, um, third generation uh, cattle rancher here in Mendocino County. Um, we have at times on our property close to 800 head of cows and calves uh, wandering about in the ranges. And while, you know, non-lethal methods are great, uh, they're not going to work in the majority of places where livestock are, are grazed here in Mendocino County. We just, as Larry Meyer had said, the terrain's too steep, the topography's too um, rough, the soils won't hold fences in, and as been mentioned many times today, wild pigs will do havoc on fences and allow many predators to come in. Um, one night I had four calves that were killed in one night by one lion. And uh, before that I had, I'd seen a, a, what I thought was a problem, and after I saw the third, you know, the calf killed, I called the trappers, they came in, and they uh, actually we took all the livestock off of the hill, and within a 50 yards of where we took them down on, on ATVs and dogs and everything, here was the lion was in the tree right there. But the trapper had found that he'd killed three others besides the one that I found, and he'd been in that tree just holed up. I think non-lethal methods are great, and it, they may have some promise. But I ask you to think about the smaller places where um, live, you know, 4-H. FFA people that can't have um, some of these, you know, the, go to the extent to uh, protect their livestock. And also remember that non-lethal has been tried in the past. Um, a neighbor of ours, Floyd Johnson, tried um, tape recorders at one year, you know, for some time on a theory that coyotes would be hearing voices out in the middle of the night, they'd run away. And it may have had a little bit of success, and I think probably this, this um, fox light um, might have success, but I think they're going to get used to it. I mean, people get used to a stop sign and they go right through it. And so I would support the continuance of wildlife services. It's a necessary tool, and it's been mentioned before, we need a couple of tools in our box. Thank you. Thank you. 
That concludes speakers, and um, it is 6:30. Um, so we will we have received your presentation as a condition. Um, thank you for your information. There were several of you here. Appreciate it, and um, I want to thank you. So, supervisors, we could call the 5:30 rule, um, but we. I just want to say we have Department of Transportation, Director's Report, Chief Executive Officer, but we have a written copy, correct? Mm -hmm. And um, we don't have anything on our ledge platform. And if a supervisor wants to stay to give a report. <laughs> well, by direction, we can continue reports to next meeting. You're free to report. That's what happens in Congress all the time. The guy's standing there. There's nobody in the room. Well, you but can, if anybody, any supervisor. You don't have to be there, right? But if you want to be on the seat, If any supervisor has something really important, please take it to the CEO and we can get an email out to everyone. Okay, we're going to adjourn the meeting. It is 6.34.